Good evening, Aymara, Hazel, Carlos, and Mario. Thank you so much for being on time. I hope that you are doing well and that you have had a beautiful day today. Uh, we're going to start the class. I only have a four. Maybe the rest is um on the way, but we need to start. Um, I'll share the screen with you. So today we're going to finish or section number three. And we'll start section number four, which is assessing risks. The first exercise in case you really is to continue building our vocabulary. And uh, this is um, much the term related to the assembly process to their corresponding meaning. So we have well, screw, tighten, adjust, and a screw. And we have the definitions or the terms here to move an object slightly so that it is in the right place of it or it fits better. To turn an object as a screw until it is tight and it cannot be turned um, anymore. To join two pieces of metal or plastic by hitting so the edges come together. A pointed piece of metal with a twist part on it called thread, instead of hitting with a hammer, you push and turn in order to fasten pieces of metal or wood together. To attach one surface to another using a screw. So you have there the definitions and the words. So we have to complete the matching exercise. If you prefer to work from the material that you download from the platform, you're gonna find this exercise on page 30.
Have you finished or do you need more time to complete this exercise? Hello, teacher. Hi, Michael. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm driving yet. Oh, you're still driving. Home. Oh, you're still yes. driving. Okay. Then no worries. Thank you so much for letting me know. Thank you, teacher. Okay, let's check. Uh, what do you have for um, weld? What do you think is the definition for weld? I think is uh, to join two pieces of metal or plastic behind teeth so they come together. Right. No? Yes, that's correct. Excellent, Aymara. Thank you so much for your answer. Okay. Number two, screw. Uh, to attach one surface to another using a screw. Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much, Carlos. That's correct. And number two should be here. Great. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, 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 it's correct. Number two goes here. Now, tighten. Tighten. Tightening is to turn an object as a spring until it is time and it cannot be drawn anymore. Excellent. Thank you so much, Miguelita. That is correct. Now let's see the number four. Adjust. Adjust. A volunteer for adjust. I think to move an object 
slightly so that it is in the right place or it fits her. Excellent, that's correct. Okay, thank you so much for your participation. And finally, number five, it's a skirt, a pointed piece of metal with a twisted fork on it called thread. Instead of getting moved by a hammer, you push and turn in order to fasten pieces of metal or wood together. So yeah, excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. It's highly appreciated and you did an excellent job with this exercise, uh, vocabulary exercise. Um, so we can continue now with the next thing. Uh, talking again about indirect questions and information questions, this is um, just a kind of a view. Remember that uh, indirect information questions are, are not introduced by if, instead they are introduced with a WH word. Es parte de lo que ya estábamos eh, practicando el día de ayer, que por cierto ya, ya lo dominan pues muy bien, excelente. Eh, ahora pues practicarlo con las eh, preguntas de las WH questions, que también son llamadas information questions. Eh, en las indirect information questions, ellas no son introducidas con if, En vez de eso, son eh, introducidas con una WH word. Um, y ahí tenemos algunos ejemplos para que nos guiemos. I wonder what the two pieces I need to weld are. Esa sería la indirecta en la 1A. El 1B es como el directa. What are the two pieces I need to weld? Um, Otro ejemplo sería la número dos. I'd like to know when the provider will send the order of the screw. Um, el, el la directa sería when will the provider send the order of the screw. So, y tenemos más ejemplos al otro lado con would you mind? Would you mind telling us how much the provider charges to the process order? Comparado a la directa, que sería, how much does the provider uh, charge to process the order? Uh, y el último ejemplo, would you let me know what time the first batch is expected to be completed? Comparado con, what time is the first batch expected to be complete? Como recordatorios, helping verbs como do, does y did no se incluyen en las preguntas indirectas. Si el segmento que introduce es una frase, usamos un punto al final eh, de la pregunta indirecta o si es una pregunta, es una frase de, de pregunta, entonces se usa un question mark que es al primer, uh, donde está acá, a su izquierda, van a ver, I wonder what the two pieces I need to well are, y la número dos, I'd like to know. Ninguna de las dos es una WH word. I wonder o I'd like to know. Si vamos a empezar eh, la pregunta indirecta con I wonder, I'd like to know, o ese tipo de, de, de frases. Entonces, no ponemos signo de pregunta al final. Pero si esta pregunta es introducida con una WH word, como would, ahí tenemos dos ejemplos. Uno, would you mind? El otro es, would you let me know? En ese caso, sí. Si empezamos con una WH word, la pregunta indirecta, ahí sí. Vamos a usar el question mark. Um, ¿Habrá preguntas con eso? Esto, bueno, practicamos un poco de esto ayer y pues hicieron un buen trabajo con el ejercicio. Um, luego tienen uno de, eh, 
este, con estos dibujitos eh, hay que ponerles el it says number the drawings in the correct order to assemble the parts of a bicycle es como en qué orden creen ustedes que se ensamblan las partes de una bicicleta y ahí tenemos las eh, las eh, partes el primero es pedals luego tenemos frame que sería como el marco el handlebars eso sería el timón eh, shipping sería quizás el último paso verdad ya enviar el saddle que es la montura eh, wheels las ruedas en qué uh, so Pueden auxiliarse de Google. Yo no tengo ninguna idea de cómo ensamblar una bicicleta. O pueden como tratar de adivinarlo y hacer como el ejercicio como personal. Yo creo que primero, para mí, primero tendría que tener en mis manos el frame, el marco. Yo ahí pondría el número uno. Porque ahí como que vamos a metiendo las piezas, ¿verdad? En el marco casi todo creo que se ensambla en el marco. So, para mí sería un número uno, frame. And then, what do you think? I'll give you a few minutes for you to uh, think about it. How would you assemble a bicycle? You can do it by guessing. It's not about having the right answer here. But if you want to have the right answer, you can investigate a little bit using the, your browser.
Okay, so for me, number one would be the frame. And then I think that I will probably assemble the, the wheels would be for me, number two. And consequently, I guess the pedals would be the number three for me. And then the maybe the handlebars would be number four, being set at the number five, and finally six shipping. That's for me. What do you think? How would you do that? Any volunteer? Thank you, Aymara. Okay, uh, first I think is frame. Mm -hmm. Second, handlebars. Third, saddle. <laughs> How do you say saddle? Yes, saddle. Saddle. Next, the pedals. Next, wheels and finish shipping. Okay, sounds like good. You will start from the top to bottom. <laughs> so that's nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aymara. Anybody else? Nobody? Okay, thank you so much for your participation, Aymara. Oh, so then we have this reading. I think it's the last part of section number three. And in this, we are going to identify specific details in a passage related to calculating cost of a product. And uh, this is the aim of this um, paragraph. And uh, we are requested to read the text uh, featuring tips on how to analyze the cost of a product. And then we will answer some questions regarding to that reading. Um, do we have a volunteer to read? Me, teacher. Thank you, Abigail. Okay. There are three import factors business businesses need to consider when pre pricing a product. The cost of a production, the market demand for the product, and the deciding market markup by the business. The cost of a production. Fixes and variable costs determine the selling price of a business firm's product. Fixed costs include items such as the rent for your office or manufacturing space. Variable costs including items that change with your sales volume, like labor and materials. I present your product. First, determine how much of your fixes, fixes and variable costs go into producing each unit of your product. Also, this may be a difficult calculation. A simple formula that helps you is to add your total fixes cost to your total variable cost. Then you divide divide the total divide the total by your estimated total sales sales you will have then your cost of production per unit. Now you have to sell the product for at least this amount in order to cover the cost of production. Continue? Yes, please. 
Okay. Market demand for a product or service. Market demand for a product or a service is the second factor that a business owner should consider when bringing a product. The law of demand is that there is a inverse relationship between demand and price. As price fall, demand price and as price rise, demand falls, demand for your product is used as important to consider when setting a price as the cost of production. There is usually a positive, a positive, positive. or direct, positive or direct. Or relation. direct. Uh -huh. direct. Relate or direct. Like, relationship between consumer income and demand. As a consumer's income goes up, so does demand for a product. Determining the market of a product. Regardless, regardless? Regardless. Of the, regardless of the type of a small business. Markup is the mom for add to the cost of your product to determine the selling price. The market percentage is determined by the amount of the plain profit. The type of the product or service you are selling. How rapidly the product sells and the amount of service performed by the seller. Excellent. Thank you so much for helping us reading, Aguilain. And now, uh, based on this reading, we have to answer these five questions. What are the most important factors to consider when setting a price for a product? What are some examples of a fixed cost? What are examples of a variable cost? How does market demand affect pricing of your product? And what variables influence to determine the market percentage? This reading, you have it on page 32 if you want to work from your material. Uh, let me stop sharing. So that maybe it can be easier if you can see both things. Let me get into the material. We'll share it back again. Okay, here you have it. It is on page 32. That might be easier for you if you have access to both parts. But the reason I do it in a presentation is because um, you can see it like bigger and it is a guide for me for the class in here. I have to make it very small. <laughs> So that you can see both things, the reading and the questions. But I'm going to be like sharing here. And you can work in the in the PDF so it is easier to, to modify it and type your answers. You just need to click on text and you type your answers here. I'll give you time for you to if you want, you can write the answers in a notebook or you can work on your PDF file. The way is easier for you, that's okay. I'll give you time for you to answer those questions and then we're going to proceed to check attendance and to check some exercises in the platform.
Okay, I volunteer. Um, you can share a screen if you want, or maybe if you want, you can read the answers as well. Volunteer. Thank you, Mario. Um, no, no, no tiene, pero bueno, lo voy a leer entonces. Okay, wait a minute. I have to set up that option here. Okay, ready? Try it again, please. What are the most important factors to consider when setting price for a product? Uh, the cost of production, the market demand for the product, and the decided market by the business. Excellent. Number two, what are some examples of excess costs? Uh, the rent for the office or for manufacturing space. Mm -hmm. Number three, where are the examples of variable cost? It can just change with your sales volume, like labor and materials. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Number four, how does market demand affect the pricing of your product? As prices fall, demand rises. Um, as prices rise, it's demand falls. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. And five? Number, number five, what variables influence to determine, determine the market percentage? The market percentage is determining with the amount of your planet profit. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your answers with us, Mario. You did an excellent job. And I hope that everybody here in the meeting has the same answers since they are correct. So thank you so much, Mario. You did an excellent job. Now, uh, let us check attendance. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to get the file here. And uh, let's start with Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Present. Thank you. Abigail Mejia Mendoza. Present. Thank you so much. Carlos Alberto Santana. Carlos Alberto Castro Santana. Well, I see he is there connected, but no response. Um, Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Cecia Noemi Ramos. Cecia Noemi. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Cecia, for writing on the chat. Uh, Francisco Ernesto. It's probably still with internet issues. Um, Kherson Alexis. Present coach. Thank you so much. Gertrude Saimara. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Hazel Vanessa. Hazel Vanessa. Uh, okay, thank you so much for writing via chat. Thank you, Hazel. Julissa Yamile. Okay, Julissa Yamile. Yeah, it seems like. She's connected, but no response. Carla Ivania. 
present teacher. Thank you, Carla. Luis Javier Castillo. Okay, he's missing today. Maquiel Esaú. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Marilina Alejandra. Present. Thank you so much. Uh, Mario Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Melanie Alexandra. Present. Thank you. Samuel Antonio. Santos Cristina. Present. Thank you. Victor Noé. Present. Thanks a bunch. Okay. All right, uh, we're going to continue then with the next part. Before we finish the section number three, well, we already finished, but we have some exercises on the platform and then we have the midterm exam. I would like to know if you have any question in regards of those exercises. Because we have completed uh, here in the meeting, the section one, two, and also we check um, the wrong screen. Okay, we checked also one of the exercises in section number three that was troubling us. And in this, well, the first one is about vocabulary. Let's see if you remember, uh, we studied this yesterday. The act of putting a label on something or labels that are put onto something. Do you remember the answer? What is that? Is that capping, labeling, or quality control? Labeling. Mm -hmm. Great. To provide or cover with or as if with a cup. Is that quality, filter, or capping? Capping. Capping. All right. Thank you. A group of things wrapped or tied together for easy handling or carrying. Is that packing, mix, or quality control? A group of things wrapped or tied together for easy handling or carrying. Packing. Packing. That's good. Thank you so much. A system for verifying and maintaining a desired level of quality in an existing product or service. By careful planning. Quality control. Quality control. Thank you. To combine substances, elements, things, etc., into a one mass collection or assemblage. Mix. 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 All right. Excellent. Thank you so much. And you see, I see that you remember the vocabulary and that kind of friendly vocabulary. Excellent job. And yes, this is the one that we thought that was giving us some troubles and we want you to go ahead and continue. And we have also studied this topic. So uh, we can move to and this one, and this, I think it's under it. Uh -huh. So we're going to complete with the correct answer, the phrase that best complete. OK, 
Let's try. I have no idea where she is. Well, we have contracted in the full form where she is or where she is or where is she? Where she is. Where she is. Okay. Could you tell me where she's gone? Where is she gone? Or where has she gone? Where she's gone. Where she's gone? Okay. I asked them where were they going? They were going. They were. They were. Okay. Can you tell me how much will it cost or it will cost? It will. It will. Do you have any idea how long need to do it? Did it take? It took? Took it. It took. Took it? Me to do it? It took. It took me to do it. Okay, sending 20 out of 20. Excellent job. So remember, if you are taking notes or if you are working along with me or it's I have no idea where she is. Could you tell me where she's gone? I asked them where they were going. Can you tell me how much it will cost? And do you have any idea on how long it took me to do it? And Let's see the next exercise. It's the reading that we practiced <laughs> a couple of minutes ago. So um, let's see if you remember the answers because we, we just read this. Or if you have done it in the platform already, you can help us. What is the most important fact to consider when setting a price for a product? Which one would you select? Market them for a product first. Okay, thank you. Number two, what is an example of a fixed cost? Office rent and manufacturing space. Office rent and manufacturing space, very good. Now, what is an example of a variable cost? Paper and materials. Paper and materials? Okay, good. How does market demand affect the pricing of your product? As prices fall, demand rises, and as prices rise, demand falls. Excellent. <laughs> and the last one, what variable influence to determine the markup percentage? The amount of planet profit. The amount of planned profit. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for helping us with this exercise, Maria. And we have one last exercise left here in section number three. Um, choose the correct alternative. Oh, it sounds like, has she told you if in the red, will she or she will? Que orden tenemos? Ah, yes, she will. 
Mm -hmm. Because tienen los indirect, se caracterizan por tener orden de oración, no de pregunta. So, yes, very good. Can you explain me why so expensive? It's all right. She asked me where I come. I come from. Very good. I was wondering why take a train, it will be quicker. We don't. We don't? All right. Can you remember what did she say? What she said? What she said. What she said. Mm -hmm. Great. Fantastic. You did it. It's 20 out of 20. Yes, all of them are correct. Easy. Esta es una característica de los indirect requests. Ellos no tienen orden de preguntas, sino que van más bien como una oración. Muy bien. And then... We finally arrived at the midterm exam. Esto, la mayoría, creo que un poquito más de la mitad, ya lo completaron hasta acá la plataforma. Eh, recuerden que ya solo nos quedan, eh, quiero ver, eh, creo que nueve días de clase. If I'm not mistaken, solo nueve días. Entonces, el midterm eh, ya debería de estar hecho. Eh, eh, ¿Qué es lo que teníamos después ahí? Con la sección 1, 2 y 3, que son los ejercicios que acabamos de estar revisando, los de la sección 3, hasta ahí, más el midterm exam y avanzando o finalizando ya la sección 4. Eh, eh, eso tiene bastante de vocabulario también, pero no es nada complicado, creo que el único tema gramatical que está un poquito... Eh, que va a estar un poquito pesadito quizás es la passive voice, pero así como lograron dominar las indirect requests, van a lograr dominar la voz pasiva en presente perfecto. El único que siento yo está más miedo es el nombre gramatical, pero realmente no es algo imposible, pero sí vamos a hacer bastante práctica con esto. Si necesitan ayuda con algún ejercicio de um, a midterm exam de la plataforma, recuerden escribir en el chat para poder ayudarles y que puedan avanzar. Now, to start sharing, well, vamos a empezar casi, bueno, todo básicamente está en el material que descargaron de la plataforma. Ya para mañana o pasado mañana, quizás sí voy a agregar un poquito más de, de material de apoyo para que podamos practicar más el tema. La section number four, the name or the topic is assessing risk. So that's the vocabulary that we're going to be uh, practicing, uh, assessing risk. Describe risks and hazards at my workplace. We will discuss the effects of risk and hazards on the business operation. Provide safety measures to reduce risk at the production plan. Identify key information in a passage about a fire escape plan. Risk assessment process. For example, risk, hazard, exposure, safety measures, irreversible damage, precautionary, etc. Safety wear, for example, earplugs. Helmet, Google, silk toe boots, etc. Effects of uncontrolled hazard risk like financial loss, loss of trust in the organization, loss of customer, business interruption, casualties, etc. Um, the topic, passive voice in the present perfect tense. Como pueden ver en la parte gramatical que vamos a estar desarrollando es la voz pasiva en el tiempo presente perfecto. Como les digo, el nombre gramatical asusta, pero es not rocket science. No es difícil. 
es, sí vamos a practicarlo bastante. Y videos, pues como ya saben, hay videos ahí, algunos están disponibles aún, algunos otros no. Pueden hacer clic en el enlace del material en el PDF para poder ver si hay acceso o no a los links. Y lo pueden hacer en algún tiempo que le vayan a dedicar extra, aparte de estar aquí en las conferencias. Eh, pueden chequear esos enlaces, pero sí, eso no, no lo hacemos por cuestiones de los derechos de autor. Eh, article. Tenemos un article about resources, about workplace hazard risk assessment and safety measures, identifying and managing business risk, how to prevent a following risk and hazard, And we will design a poster to announce safety measure at the workplace. So we start with this conversation. And as you know, we do not have audios for this one. I'm going to read it for you. And then uh, you will role play it in, maybe in groups. I think sometimes you feel like better by doing it in the breakup rooms. So this is a conversation between Marcus and Jose, and then I'll start. Let me check if the list of hazards and safety measure is complete. Measures for electric shocks or electric burn. Yeah, it is. Have you finished the first draft for the office safety plan yet? Already, Marcos. Now I'll work on the plan for reporting hazards and incidents. Great. I'll work on some ideas on controlling risk because we haven't made much progress on that. All right. Then I'll work on establishing the incident problem. Probabilities, the potential severity, risk value, and risk level. That sounds good. We want to have everything ready by the end of the week. Do you have any question about vocabulary or pronunciation? Okay, seems like no questions. So um, I'm going to create the breakout room so that you can practice this conversation in groups. And this one is on page 33 of your material, the one that you download from the platform. Remember, it's page 33. I'm gonna stop sharing and create the breakout rooms for you to practice. ¿Alguien puede presentar? Luis, can you share the screen? Uh, parece que Luis quizás no puede participar. La voy a mover de room, Abigail. Ok,
¿Alguien puede presentar o presento yo en mi teléfono? Nadie lo va a compartir. Él se ofrece a compartir. Gracias. Thank you. Pero si no. Aquí está. Se ve, se ve bien. Let me know if you can see. Mm -hmm. Sí, se ve bien, Nadia. Ok. Thank you. Which one practice? Me. Abigail. Okay. Okay. Let me check if the list or answer in Safe Masonry is complete. Masonry for electric stuff. For electric form. Yeah. It is had to finish the first draft for the office and petty plan yet. Already, Marcos. Now I work on the plan for reporting hazard and incident. Great. I work on some idea on controlling risk because we haven't made such for risk on that. All right, then I will work on establishing the incident probability probab sorry probabilities. The potential servity, servity, risk, value, and risk level. That sounds good. That sounds good. We can't have everything written by the end of the week. Okay. Now, I am Marcos, and you are Josue. Okay. Okay. Let me check if the list of hazard and safety measure is complete. Insurance for electric shock, for electric burn. Yeah, it is. How you finish the first draft for the office safe, safety plan yet? Already, Marcos. Now, I work on the plan for reporting as an an excellent incident. Great. I'll work on some ideas on con controlling risk because we haven't made much much progress on that. All right then our work of establishing that incident probability that potential severity tricks ever do. Tricks value and risk level. That sounds good. We want to have everything ready by the end of the week. Okay, thank you so much. Who is next? Thank you. Cristina. Hola, Marita. ¿Va a participar? Sí, sí, sí. Vale. Si quiere, lo hacemos. Vaya, está bien. Va a ser Marcos yo y luego cambiamos. Ok, ok. Let me check if the list of hazard and safety measures is complete. Measures for electric shock, for electric burn. Yeah, it is. Have you finished the first draft of the office safety plan yet? Already, already. Marcos now is work on the plane for reporting hazard and incident. Great. I work on some ideas of controlling risks because we haven't made much progress up on that. All right. Then it'll work on establishing the incident probabilities, probability, the potential, potential severity, risk value, and risk level. That's sounds good. We want to have every, everything ready by the end of the week. Okay. Okay. Before you change, 
Solo tres palabras. Uh, measures. 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 Uh -huh. measures. Y la otra donde está la contracción de I will work es I'll work. I'll, I'll work. I'll work. Y la última palabra sería value. Aquí en la última de José, value. Value. Es antes de, antes de esa que acaba de decir, ¿dónde está? ¿En qué renglón está? ¿En qué línea? I work. Um, I work. ¿Sí? On establishing. Establishing. La, ajá, es como si va a decir silencio. Shh, establishing. No la, no la encuentro. Ajá, establishing. Anda, Josué, la última de Josué. Establishing. All right, then I'll work on establishing. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. You can continue. Gracias, Yo. Bye. Let me check if the list of hazard and suspect safety. I say safety. Or safety. Safety. Yes, safety. 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 Um, es como si la E no se pronuncia. Safety. Okay. Safety. Safety. Measure is complete. Measures. For measures. Measures for electric shocks. Um, lo voy a empezar de nuevo. Let me check if the list of hazard and safety measures is complete. Measures for electric shocks. For electric board, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It is how you finish the first draft for the office safety plan yet. Already, Marcos. Now I'll work on the plan for reporting hazard and, and incident. Okay, great. It'll work on some ideas. On controlling risk because we have we haven't made much progress on that. All right, then I'll work on establishing the incident probabilities, the potential safe stability, risk value, and risk level. That sounds good. That sounds good. We want to have everything. Read the end of the week. Thank you, Don Mario. Gracias, Tich. Ok, you're welcome. Hoy siguen 100 más. ¿Sí? Don Víctor está de oyente, vea. Don Alexis y la niña Aymara. Ah, pues a ellos dos les toca. Quizás no están disponibles los compañeros. Sí, quizás no están disponibles. Si quieres sí, que siga este don Magdiel con Abigail mientras nos llama la ficha. Ok. Is she ready? Abigail. Hola, si gustan, puedo. Ok. I'm Marcos. Ok. L let me check if the list of hazard and safety measures is complete. Measures for electric shock, for electric burr. Yeah, it is. How you finish the first draft for the old safety plan yet? Already, Marcos. Now, 
I'll work on the plan for reporting hazard and accidents. Great. I'll work on some ideas on controlling risk because we haven't made much progress on that. All right. Then I'll work on establishing the incident probabilities, the potential safety, risk value, and risk level. That sounds good. We have uh, we want to have everything ready by the end of the week. Okay. okay. Hoy dice ver, sabe. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, let me check if the list of hazard and safety measures is complete. Complete. Mm -hmm. Measures for electric shocks for electric burn. Yeah, it is. Have you finished the first draft for the office safari plan yet? I will. Okay, now could you practice the conversation? I was a group practicing and you did a very nice job with this. Um, now you might remember, this is the conversation that we just practiced in the group. And then we have some questions about that conversation. Maybe you remember who has worked on the office safety plan. If you don't, you can go back and check who will work on the plan to report hazards and incidents. And number three, what is an area of the risk assessment process in which the manager haven't progressed much? I'll give it time in case that you don't remember the answers. I know that uh, sometimes if we are focusing on practicing the conversation, we are not paying attention to those kind of details. So most likely you will need to go back and check the conversation so that you can answer the three questions. And give it some minutes and then we'll check.
Okay, let us check number one. Who has worked on the office safety plan? What do you have? Marcos. I think Josue. Josue. Yes, it's Josue. Josue has worked on the office safety plan. And who will work on the plan to report hazards and incidents? Josue? Josue, well, <laughs> yes, Jose as well. It looks like he's the, the, the safety engineer in church. <laughs> now, number three. What is an area of risk assessment process in which the managers haven't progressed much? What is an area of risk assessment process in which the managers haven't progressed much? Controlling risk. Controlling risk, excellent. Thank you so much for your answers. Now, after that, we have um, a building vocabulary exercise. I think that we can do this just without a dictionary. We don't need a dictionary or translator. Let's try to do it without those tools. We're going to match the terms related to training and personal development to their meaning. And then we're going to check out theirs with our classmates here in the main section. And we have the words risk, hazard, exposure, safety measure, irreversible damage, and precautionary. Uh, and then we have the definition consequence or damage that is so serious that is impossible to undo. Aim to protect someone or something from a hazardous situation. Procedure to prevent something dangerous from happening. Likelihood of harm in specific circumstances and protect from something dangerous or unpleasant and potential to be dangerous and cause harm. So let's try to match the words with the definitions. And if you want to do it from your PDF, it's on page 34. If not, you can work in your notebooks. I'll give you some time.
Okay, let us check your answers, volunteer. Thank you so much. Are you going to share the screen or read the answers? Read the answers. Okay. Uh, number one, risk. Potential, potential to the dangerous and to cause harm. That is correct. Thank you. Continue. Hazard. Hazard. S -E ah. Pros, uh, like, likely, likely good or hard in specific circumstances. Excellent. Likelihood of harm in specific circumstances. Great. Continue, please. Exposure to protect from something dangerous or unpleasant. Excellent. Continue. Safety measure. Mm -hmm. Procedure to prevent something dangerous from happening. Happening. That is a safety measure. Safety measure, procedure to prevent something dangerous from happening. Okay, let's put it there. Number four. That would be four. Uh huh. Procedure to prevent something dangerous from happening. Mm -hmm. Number five is irreversible damage. Is consequence of the match that is so serious that is impossible to undo. Aha. Uh -huh. Number six, precautionary. I need to protect someone, something, something from a has, has, hazardous situation. Awesome. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much, Mario. Great job. Okay. Uh -huh. Do you have the same answers or you have something different here? Are all your answers the same? Todos tienen las mismas respuestas? Yes, teacher. Excellent. Thank you so much for confirming and thank you for your participation and your very good job with this one. Now, to continue with the topic, let me continue here. That's on page 34. And then we have these and you can probably, you would like to do it in group. And here we have a, uh, let's see. We have a, a chart here in which we are going to categorize the different types of hazards related to um, work. There are maybe office hazards, hazardous substances, electricity, fire hazard, sleep, trips and fall risk. You will do this on page 34 and this is an example. I did uh, this example for you. Okay, we have hazards and risk. Office hazards, for example, in office hazards, we could mention as examples of office hazards, these two things are I have here is mildew and mold. What what's that? Any idea? Mildew and mold. Um, this um, ambos on mold. Son mojo, um, lo que se crea, por ejemplo, en las paredes, eh, 
mojo que es como causado por hongos, tal vez de la humedad, etcétera. Eso es, puede ser una amenaza. Si, si las paredes tienen mojo, uno puede respirar esas partículas de, 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 del mojo o de hongo y se nos puede ir a los pulmones. So that's a hazard. Another probably office hazard can be stinging insects. Insectos que pican. Pueden haber, no sé, zancudos, eh, chinches o algo otro tipo de insectos que nos puedan picar. Por lo tanto, es como bueno que fumiguen de vez en cuando. <laughs> Another office hazard que les puse ahí es open desk drawers. Okay. Si hay gente o que deja las, de, las gavetas abiertas de sus escritorios, alguien podría torpezar con esa gaveta o les podría caer encima o en los pies. So that's a um, part of the vocabulary related to um, office hazard. Now about uh, hazardous substances, um, probably flammable chemicals. Toxic and corrosive chemicals, that can be. Electricity and fire, fire hazards that we can find at the workplace can be trailing power cords. Okay, cuando los um, cables, eh, los power cords, los cables que se conectan a la electricidad para encender eh, Devices, eh, puede ser que estén enredados, a eso se refiere trailing, están enredados, eh, cables enredados, puede ser una amenaza eh, eléctrica. Then we have frayed and faulty cords or wiring, cables o cordones que tienden a tener alguna falla, están defectuosos, faulty. Or frayed, estén pelados o separados. Um, about uh, sleep, trip, and fall risk. Riesgo de, de, de deslizarse, sleep, tropezar, trip, and fall, caerse. Cosas que pueden de, eh, ponernos en ese tipo de riesgo podría ser greasy floors que los suelos estén grasosos. And even walking surfaces, eh, a surface, and even es que no estén parejos. Eh, and even, que estén desiguales los suelos o por donde uno camina. Loose tiles or carpets, tal vez que hayan ladrillos sueltos, that is loose tiles, o las carpetas también, los um, alfombras estén um, sueltas. Um, so, eso es lo que yo les puse por ahí como ejemplo, pero ustedes en grupo pueden discutir y encontrar más. Les voy a compartir un link en el que también pueden encontrar más material eh, relacionado a las um, cosas que pueden ponernos en riesgo o son una amenaza en nuestro ámbito laboral. Voy a dejar de compartir. Les voy a mandar el enlace por si lo quieren consultar en el grupo. Y um, el, 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 el cosito este, el cartel que van a trabajar está en la página 34. Está así, está en blanco. Y este fue el que les hice yo para que tuvieran como ejemplo. Y se los puedo mandar al, al grupo de WhatsApp para que les quede por ahí. Se la voy a mandar en un momento. Antes voy a hacer los breakout rooms y les voy a compartir el enlace que les estaba mencionando que les puede ayudar un poco más con el vocabulario. O darles ideas también. Okay. Voy a compartirlo acá en el chat de la mire. Y también se los voy a compartir por WhatsApp. Para quienes no, no puedan unirse y decidan trabajarlo luego.
Sí, les compartí ya el enlace para que tengan un poco más de ideas con este vocabulario y el ejemplo que les creé. Hello, partners. Hello. What we are going to do? First, you can check the link. Pueden chequear primero el enlace que les mandé para que tengan un poco más de idea de de qué poner en el en el cartel en el chart que está en blanco en la página 34 creo de su de su PDF. Ah, sí, la 34, está en la página 34 de su PDF. Ahí tienen que completar ese cuadrito con diferentes tipos de amenazas, como dice ahí, ¿verdad? Y así que el vocabulario, como es bastante específico, bastante técnico, les hice el ejemplo donde dividí unas uh, amenazas eh, de oficinas, sustancias que pueden ser una amenaza, amenazas eléctricas, amenazas de caídas o tropiezos, ¿qué nos puede ocasionar eso? Entonces, también les puse el link para que ustedes... Eh, consideren el vocabulario que encuentren ahí para completar ustedes su, eh, su cartel en la página 34. Lo pueden hacer en grupo y luego lo comparten. Ok, teacher. ¿Qué se refiere a electricity, electricity and fire hazard? Son amenazas de incendio o amenazas eléctricas. Por ejemplo, eh, un cable pelado puede causar un cortocircuito y por ende un, un incendio, vea. Ese podría ser un, un ejemplo de una amenaza de uh, eléctrica o de incendio. Algo más que pueda ocasionar algún incendio en el trabajo, digamos. Mm. Tal vez que los, que los empleados fumen adentro. Uh -huh. That yeah. can be uh, smoking, for example, uh, smoking employees, smokers. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Okay, unfortunately, timing was not enough for the group who was working on this exercise. So, but no worries, you'd have the link there so you can check the reading whenever you have time during the day tomorrow. And then we will complete it or you can share ideas in tomorrow's section. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us today. And well, um, remember also to work on the platform. You should be at least finishing section number four. Thank you for joining today and see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, teacher. Have a good night. Have a good night.